Buakao was one who instilled the fear of Muay Thai in the hearts of the K-1 Max fighters. He managed to combine the beauty of technical fighting with the devastating power of Muay Thai. His knees in a clinch were so intimidating that K-1 had to change the rules because of him. And today you will see one of the best tournaments of this legendary fighter. The 2006 tournament was the fifth K-1 middleweight Grand Prix. Albert Kraus became the champion in the first tournament. In the second, Masato. In the third, Bukau. And in the fourth, Andy Sauer. At this time, every tournament became legendary. When you compare them to the current boring UFC cards, not to mention kickboxing, you realize how great they were. The fight card was truly packed with stars. In his first match, Wakao had to face the dangerous Yoshihiro Sato, who knocked out Mike Zambidis in the qualifying round. In the 2006 tournament, Wakao, also known as White Lotus, fought under the name Wukao Por Pramuk, rather than his given name, Banchamek. And that is why we will use this name throughout the video. From the start of the fight, it seemed that Sato was unable to use his arm swing effectively and lacked rigidity. Wukao stood in front of him like a rock, periodically planting a right cross. The White Lotus throws an excellent combination. Sato pushes forward, but immediately lets him go. The Thai fighter does not have to close the distance. Bukau throws a left jab and a right cross, pulls away for a moment, and immediately duplicates the punches. Sato is knocked down. In boxing, Bukau has always been underestimated. But the Japanese fighter gets up, and poor Pramuk turns up the heat. Three times in a row, he throws a left jab and a right cross as the fighters go head-to-head. -head. Sato doesn't even learn from his mistakes. Bukau gives an excellent performance with his right hand reaching its target over and over again. In the end, Bukau throws sweeping strikes, but Yoshihiro holds out for the bell. The star of this round was Bukau's right cross, accurate and technical. The White Lotus didn't even really invest too much power in his strikes. Sato starts the second round very aggressively, throwing a left jab and a right cross of his own, followed by a low kick. Bukau catches the kick and delivers a left hook of his own, knocking Sato down and out. It's a great knockout by Bukau, who always is extremely respectful of his opponent. The Thai fighter noticed that Sato had a weakness in his sluggish front kick and took advantage of that fact. But a year later, Yoshihiro Sato would knock out Buakao in a rematch, shocking the fighting world. By defeating Sato, the White Lotus made it to the semifinals and headed towards his next opponent in the tournament. His opponent was Gago Drago, a tough Armenian fighter who had defeated Albert Kraus, the first K1 Max champion, in the quarterfinals. This was Drago's first K1 Grand Prix and he was going to give it his all. Some have said that he reminded them of Tony Ferguson and his fighting style reflects that similarity. Drago delivers a daring front kick to the head, but Buakao is unimpressed and soon punishes him for his sweeping attack. Buakao uses the skills he has honed in the stadiums of Thailand. Poor Pramuk is waiting for Drago's aggressive attacks. He counterattacks effectively, clearly surpassing him in speed.
Wakao delivers a hard blow in the corner of the ring. Overall, this was not the most successful round for Drago, though he is clearly not finished. In the second round, the Armenian met Buakau in the center of the ring, where they exchanged a hard combination of punches. Drago throws a right cross that strikes Buakau's head. Drago's aggressive style here looks both like Ferguson and Diego Sanchez. Drago, gaining confidence, aggressively began throwing a series of punches in hopes of finishing off Wakao. Poor Pramuk relies on kicks in this round, raising his defense with high kicks and punching powerfully to both the body and legs. Once again, Wakao's right hand sends his opponent to the floor. Drago is knocked down by another beautiful cross. But Drago got back to his feet and continued the fight. Overall, he looked much better in this round than he had in the first. Final round. The Armenian Dutchman Drago is serious. His punches to the body and the right cross to the head are delivered well. But in the third round, he gets hooked and couldn't keep up with Wakao's kicks and knee strikes. Wakao delivers a blow to Drago's body, but lowers his defenses in the process and Drago throws a roundhouse kick. Wokao is shocked by the audacity of the strike, but returns a roundhouse kick of his own. The speed of the White Lotus and the variety of strikes simply left Drago no chance. Another knee and another middle kick from Wokao marks the finale of the round. Poor Pramuk has no doubts about his victory and Drago was disappointed with the outcome. But unlike the local star Yoshihiro Sato, he held out to the end. Another spectacular victory for Buakao. It's time for the final fight against Buakao's old friend, Andy Sauer. Andy had previously defeated Buakao with a controversial decision in the 2005 Grand Prix Final. Bukau, Sauer, and Masato are still considered the holy trinity of K1 Max to this day. And that evening it was decided who would become the first fighter to become the champion of K1 Max twice. Sauer looked pretty shabby after fighting Masato in the semi-finals. He didn't hit as hard as poor Pramuk, but was distinguished by the high pace of combat, speed, and non-standard attacks. It was Sauer who was on his own in Japan as he fought in the local promotion shoot boxing. He even performed in their traditional outfit. Sauer throws a hard left hook to the liver. Sauer has always been slightly better than Wukao with his hands. He squeezes the Thai fighter into the corner but was unable to turn this to his advantage. Again, poor Pramuk relies on high hard kicks and middle kicks. Andy's series of punches seemed to do him no harm. The round went off again at high speeds and definitely in favor of the fresher Wukau. At this point, the scales are clearly in favor of Wukau, so if Sauer is going to do something, he had to do it now. Round 2 Sauer is actively moving forward trying to reach Bukau with one of his hands. 
but he was unable to break through the hard tie block. The kicks from the White Lotus continue to fly wildly. Another series of left hooks come from Sauer, and then the fighters are in a clinch. Andy looked away from the fight for a moment, and a left hook from Wukau sends him down. Sauer violated the first commandment of kickboxing, protect yourself at all times. It was a powerful blow from Wukau, who invested a lot in the punch. But Sauer gets up and is ready to continue. Wukau strikes him at every chance, but is unable to finish him off because of Sauer's cunning and experience. He then hits Sauer with a combination, a left hook, right hook, uppercut and left hook again, which leads to another knockdown for Sauer. This time Wakao went behind his head and the shocked Sauer collapsed from a precise right cross. This was a stunning victory for the White Lotus in their long-awaited rematch. The title earned in retaliation becomes even more valuable. So Bukau Por Pramuk silenced all the critics who claimed that in those years, he only had kicks and knee strikes, but no boxing talent. He sent each of his three opponents to the floor in that tournament, knocking out two of them and all using his boxing talents. Thanks to everyone for watching, especially our longtime followers. Don't forget to click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.